today? I'm very well, Leo. How are you doing? All good, all good. You're looking, you're looking good. You're looking well. How's the weather in, in London? Yeah, good, thanks. You're looking good as well, uh, Leo, as always. But yeah, the weather is um, quite quite cold this week, actually. Um, hopefully it changes next, next week, but yeah. <laughs> quite chilly, quite chilly. Yeah. Perfect, right. If you are a coach watching or you watch uh, our, our videos on a regular basis, I want you to go back and watch our previous one with Helen Steele. Andrew uh, was a guest on that on that episode as well it was a great one to watch uh, helen gave us some really great insights didn't she andrew yeah yeah she did she was um yeah we, we could have had a whole day on that you know <laughs> we sure could have we sure could have and today's episode we also could have a whole day on it as well and um, we're going to be talking about something that is very important uh, when you're running a business and it's a struggle and challenge that a lot of coaches face when it comes to accounting. So over the last couple of weeks, I've spoken to a lot of coaches who are going through a stage in their business now where accounting fees have become very expensive for them. And what better person to bring on to answer a lot of these questions, but my friend, uh, Andrew, who deals with clients on a regular basis, and he'll give you guys an insight into why accountants can charge high fees. Um, first question, why are you guys so so expensive? <laughs> yeah, so that is a uh, that is a good good question. And I th that that's yeah, it's it's a question where it really depends what you're getting. Right. And it depends on the accountant. You know, you have some accountants where they have traditionally charged high fees for yeah. just year end stuff. And don't get me wrong, accountancy fees, they're, you know, they're expensive for a reason, especially if you're a limited company. You know, um, accountancy fees have a, they, you know, they normally have a minimum, char minimum charge, even for the newest businesses. And it's got to be done properly. It's got to be mm -hmm. done properly. Now, don't get me wrong. The client as well have to make sure their record keeping is is good because that helps with the fees. If, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you've got a sports coach that their record keeping is quite bad, well, what's going to happen is higher fees, you know? Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah, you know, in essence, you do get, a lot of the time as well, sports coaches don't know, and this is the problem with the accountancy industry as well, is communicating what is provided to, you know, sports coaches and business in, businesses in general. Yeah. Because, you know, even even doing a set of accounts, you know, it, it takes work. It takes work. They've got to pay for, obviously, software and things like that. So mm -hmm. that, is, um, that is, I guess, part of the reason why, you know, accountancy fees are can be pricey mm -hmm. you know but as i said you know <clears throat> you mentioned as well outside of this call is that some business owners and this catches a lot of business owners out especially if they're starting out is last minute you know they've been running their business for let's say for example a, a year and their deadline is okay nine months after their year end yeah. And they approach, you know, they get a notification from HMRC saying you've got to, you know, submit your company tax return or if you're, you know, self-employed, your self-assessment. And they try and, and you know, contact a, an accountant about, you know, two months or a month before their deadline. Yeah. Right. So that's where a lot of um, the fees the increase in fees comes from because they usually will charge maybe two, three times the amount. And, you know, it will, a lot of the time it won't even be, it will just be, you know, a set of accounts and this will be your, your, your tax. Some of the times they might not even have enough time to give you particular, you know, advice that that year is over. So any advice, advisory services is gone because it's too late. Yeah. So <clears throat> that's one thing I would say that the client can control is, Get seek advice early on in the in the process, and also if there is a 
business owner who you know has a deadline coming in what two two months one month they're going to be struggling they're going to be desperate and they may not pick the right account for them yeah so they're yeah. paying more they're paying more and they're not getting the, the right accountant so so it can be problematic yeah so pretty much what you're saying is coaches need to be which i completely agree with you as well they need to be a little bit more organized yeah yeah 100 be more or be more organized and you know start it earlier on in, in the in the process of, of of your business even you know and established businesses as well established businesses they usually i get a lot of inquiries from established businesses because they're getting charged uh, you know a high accountancy fees for very little service really mm. but you know if, if you're starting a business yes you know definitely speak to an accountant speak to a few accountants compare compare the, um what they're offering and you know be very what i would say to to you know new new business owners is really understand what they're offering and how do they break down those costs is it clear have they mentioned any additional fees you know or ask them are there any additional fees because sometimes they do that sometimes especially with the you get a lot of advertisements coming in saying that you know you could do your tax return we could submit your tax return in for you know x amount which is very very cheap but then there's add-ons after and they catch you out that way as well so always ask for are there any additional fees there and it can be tough for business owners because they don't know they're in a world where they don't really understand mm. so it can be tough for them yeah so and that that last point you made where it can be tough for them brings me on to my next one is that i feel that sometimes a lot of coaches they don't take the time out to actually study um accounting or they'd study like the tax system in where they are um so how important is understanding all of that because a lot of coaches don't even know when their tax deadline is is due um so i think knowing a little bit about like when do you have to when's the tax deadline a little bit more about accountancy i think can help as well uh, when it comes to choosing the right accountant and essentially saving you money. Would you would you agree that, or what what could you do? Yeah, no, one hundred percent. And and the ways to go about that is, first of all, you know, HMRC have got a lot of good resources. At, you know, you can just type type on Google, and then HMRC will, will come up with a lot of resources to give you an idea of how it all works, record keeping requirements, and things like that. Now, when you do speak to an accountant, you do to get an accountant. Their job as well is to provide that information. Obviously, it's going to be specific information to your business. So when is your deadline and any sort of obligations you need as a business owner? So that is definitely the job of, of the accountant. If the business owner takes on um, takes on an accountant, they have to do that just so the, you know, just so the business owners know what, what their, you know, what their obligations are. Mm -hmm. um and so yeah definitely now don't get me wrong it really depends you know you get some business owners they want to really know all their all their numbers before submitting it which is obviously 100 percent fine that's that is great other business owners are just like yep yeah, just submit it but there are going to be certain concepts accounting concepts which business owners really do have to know and what one example as you know, uh, Leo, is what the director's loan account is. What does that mean? Because it has, if that's not controlled and the business owner doesn't really know and they're using their company as an ATM, then that can get um, very, very expensive very quickly in terms of the tax that needs to be paid mm -hmm. on an overdrawn uh, director's loan account. That's just one example. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. So we off air, we've talked a little bit about how the accounting industry is kind of evolving, obviously now with, with AI and, and other softwares. So to tell us a little bit, uh, especially for coaches watching, how that in like how the industry is kind of evolving and with the use of more software, is that having an effect on what you're paying uh, for, for your service or, or not? Yeah, so no, that's a good question. Now, what it means is, with 
with like software accountants using software that allows for a much easier record keeping process for the business owner you know they don't have to keep receipts and you know all these paper bills and things like that it's yeah. all done it's all done online so definitely it's it's a big time saver for business owners mm -hmm. and also from that accountants can also provide business performance reviews based on that and at a much quicker rate so yeah. accountants can actually provide a lot more um a lot more value to business owners now the question is so i'll give you an example of one I've got a client in, in e-commerce mm -hmm. and I know it's away from sports coaching, but just an example, you have e-commerce they're selling on eBay, for example, and there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of sales coming in. eBay take their cut. There's a lot of processing fees. You know, software allows that to be done a lot quicker. So mm -hmm. yeah, it does actually, it does actually reduce the accountancy fees because if accounts were to do that manually, it will take a lot longer. Yeah. You know, but it's just communicating that to the client because obviously that extra bit of software has to be paid for and recharged back to the client. But they're actually saving a lot more time because if the account was to do that on an hourly basis, it would be at least double. Yeah. Okay. So if I'm if I'm a coach and I've just started my business, I'm working with say anywhere between zero to to fifty clients at the moment. Uh, I'm now looking for an accountant. What maybe maybe two or three services which would be really important for me? Yeah. So the first thing is most accounts will will not charge for their first consultation. Okay. So first thing is speak to as many as, as you can. Now, in terms of services, you want to get compliance done first. And what I mean by compliance is ensuring that year-end accounts are done so if you're a limited company year-end accounts to company's house company tax return to hmrc if you're a sole trader self-assessment tax return mm -hmm. that's the first thing the other thing is re good record keeping because if you have bad record keeping and you're doing the books yourself when the accountant has to review that they might they, they most likely will charge a fee to review that because it's not in order mm -hmm. so if you want to get someone who don't want to do the books for you an accountant or a bookkeeper then that could be that could save you a lot of time as well mm -hmm. so those those are the, the couple of things i'd say another thing as well is if once they do get the accountant and even even during the introductory call is asking them about what their obligations are because depending on the type of business you have if you're running payroll for example there's going to be additional obligations there as well yeah now as i said that's the job of the accountant to ensure that all of that is covered and the uh, the business owner understands that okay fantastic so the big one a lot of coaches are probably going to be thinking or want to ask you is how can they save money on accounting accountancy fees yeah, yeah. I, the best one. Okay, so save money is, and it it sounds, and this is the thing, it sounds counterproductive, doesn't it? Because if you if you reach out to an accountant early on, people think that they're going to be incurring an expense quicker than actually speaking to an accountant later down yeah. the line, which is actually not not true. As I mentioned before, accounts can usually charge twice three times as much it's a lot more stressful as well so you, you've got to really factor in that uh, that time that the time uh, and the stress levels because if you are a business owner and your deadline is two months before um you know the, the hmrc deadline what does that mean for your business that means that you may have to take time out to work with your accountant to get everything sorted mm. right so first thing is speak to an accountant early on and even if you are, even if you don't want to pay for services going forward, ask them, how can I reduce my accountancy fees? And what they'll say is good rec record keeping, mm. good record keeping. So 
if you don't if you don't want to get accountancy software because that can be you know for a, a business owner they may not actually use that keeping electronic copies of everything have files you know of of every you know every type of expenditure if it's a purchase have a file for that sales you know file for that ha start doing that start doing that because when they take on an accountant the accountant would ask for that and it would just be a quick you can either you don't want google sheets you can just share that right. that folder with them and that would reduce costs a lot if you've just got paper receipts and also a lot of the time especially with new business owners they may not even be able to find some of the receipts yeah so you know and that that's 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 very counterproductive as well because if you can't find receipts then what's going to happen is the accountant will probably disallow certain expenditure because there's no source documents to back it up mm -hmm. so that's actually a detriment to the, the business okay fantastic and a bit of advice on any coach that is watching and says right i want to try and do my accounting by myself yeah so if you're a, if you're if you're a sole trader you're self-employed you can get away with doing it by yourself especially if very it's very simple you've just say you've just started out you've just started out you don't have many sales you know you don't have you know much many clients it's a very simple they don't have much expenditure for example it's quite a lean business you can do it yourself now what i would say there is yeah it can be done just make sure that you do research to ensure that any tax relief you may be getting is claimed uh, so any so any sports coaches doing it by themselves just needs to do more research that's all they just need to spend more time doing research ensuring that that any tax reliefs are are, are claimed and any record keeping um requirements are are done as well mm -hmm. now if they're a limited company a little bit different it's it's a lot harder to try and submit your own company accounts because there are accounting concepts where you as a business owner just won't understand unfortunately you know mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day accountancy it it part of the reason why it's pricey is because the training has been done to to understand how to submit a set of accounts to company tasks to um you know hmrc so there is a lot around there and i would say any business owners that are doing it submitting their limited company accounts by themselves definitely be be wary of doing that if you are doing it ha you have to pay someone to review it just to review it if you want to submit it yourself that's what i would say okay fantastic all right well andrew thanks uh, thanks for coming on sharing that with us um i know this is something that a lot of coaches when they get to the deadline uh reach out to to us about so i hope this video has answered a lot of these questions and if you are a coach watching you want to ask us a question leave it in the comment section we review all the um all the questions that we get and also if you want to get in contact with andrew description below you can contact him directly uh, he does work unfortunately only with with uk based uh, businesses so if you're in the uk then you can reach out to him so andrew before we head out uh, any last words from you yeah so i think just the last thing is if you are when you are speaking to you know a, a, a you know accountancy practices understand you know are you speaking to different departments you know are you speaking to different departments because if you're working at the end of the day it's 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 a lifelong relationship that you're going to have business yeah. relationship potentially yeah. as long as a business so being really aware of are you going to be speaking to a number of different apart departments are you going to be speaking to the same person if you're if you're going to be joining a, a an accountancy a large accountancy firm the chances are they're going to be it's going to be run by employees and one of the things is the employees most likely don't know how they don't never run a, a business themselves they're, they're yeah. employed so that could be a factor where they can actually can be quite difficult for them to provide any sort of advisory services because they themselves haven't set up a, a, a business themselves. So that's all I would say. Uh, as I said, we can obviously spend a whole whole day on this, but 
that's just kind of my final thoughts on that one. Fantastic. Yeah, and I'd, I'd like to add one more thing as well. I think as, as a coach, the most exciting part of the business is obviously the training and the coaching. So if you can get someone to, to kind of like deal with that side of the business, it allows you to do what you enjoy more. Um, because as you said, there, there is a lot of research that you have to do. Um, there's also, it's an industry that changes regularly, doesn't it, Andrew? Yeah, yeah. Tax, tax every year, every year, tax, tax updates. Yeah. Yeah. So you, it's sometimes it's better to invest a little bit of money to have someone that's up to date with it all while you focus on what you're, you're best at. I could have said it better. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, Andrew. Well, thanks again for coming on. And uh, I look forward to our next chat. Yeah, that's fine. Cheers, Leo.